Now, President Biden is back to blaming Trump and MAGA Republicans for his national security and border crises, blasting them for the faltering border bill. Every day between now and November, the American people are going to know that the only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican friends. It's time for Republicans in the Congress to show a little courage, to show a little spine, to make it clear to the American people that you work for them, not for anyone else. I know who I work for. I work for the American people. Later, Peter Ducey pressed the White House over the president's blame game. You guys talk a lot, including today, about how the war wouldn't be such a big deal if Congress would have just passed your immigration bill on day one. Who was in charge of Congress on day one? We have said is that Congress has to act, right? Congress, Democrats, Republicans have to act. But in those three years, it is true that Republicans have gotten in the way. I mean, they voted. They've, they've actually voted. The years, no it has. I'm not saying that Democrats have not been in control the first two years. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying House Republicans have got in the way. Such an agile verbal ballerina. So even though Democrats have been in control, it's still the GOP's fault? Pointing the finger at Trump and House Republicans over the failure of the Senate border bill seems odd when the administration has been claiming that the border hasn't been a crisis at all for the past few years. Remember this? This happens every single solitary year. We've dealt with this before. Uh, it is often seasonal. Uh, it is often cyclical. The border remains closed. We have seen extreme progress over these last few months. What Americans should know is that the president uh, has done uh, has done the work uh, to deal with what we're seeing at the border since day one. Ah, there seems to be a lot of attempted gaslighting going on, Harris. At the end of the day, while the administration is changing their tune on whether or not it needs addressing, they're not changing their tune on it being somehow Trump's and the GOP's fault. Well, it's a twofer because it's an election year. And by the way, brilliant on you. Agile, verbal, ballerina. <laughs> Which is so lie. much upgraded from word salad. I mean, that was amazing. <laughs> and it's so true. Uh been deficient in fixing one of the worst situations that we've seen in a really long time in this country. So I, he's going to try to do that. Democrats are going to try to help him do that. And then they're going to shift and bring in some shiny objects like Obama and Clinton and hope that we don't all see the border. But we can't stop seeing it because we live in cities that are being overrun resource-wise and human-wise. You know, we're, we're seeing the crimes. We're, we're seeing, you know, this idea that, that our veterans don't get paid first in the bills and, and the budget's cut. So the reality is going to be really hard. He's going to need to do a threefer. He's going to need to do the, you know, hit us over the head with a magic wand and make us forget reality things. Anyone can say a lie, but what doesn't lie are the facts. And as we have the facts here to show you, the number of migrants being apprehended at our southern border has surged dramatically since President Biden took office. 2.4 million under Trump and nearly 8 million migrant encounters so far under President Biden. So to Kaylee's point, doesn't it seem obvious that under one president, the fire was tamped down and under another, flames are out of control? I don't think it's that black and white. I mean, there are certain things. I mean, post-COVID, you have a lot of nations throughout the world that have gotten worse. Fortunately, the United States is not one of them. We keep getting better. We got hit, but we came back strong and we'll be stronger. That's not the case. So you have more people fleeing. Yes, Title 42, there is something to that. But there is also, that was also a measure for a time. COVID is over. Remain in Mexico? You can't have, you, remain in Mexico. The border wall? Remain in, may I? Remain in, remain in Mexico. 
Mexico doesn't want remain in Mexico anymore. So in Mexico is saying nada, no mas. So threaten them with terrorists. We can't, no, we can't do that. With what we can oh, we've do, done it before. what we can do, and what was not able to be done during the Bush administration, the Obama administration, even the Trump administration, the Biden, every administration, is Congress has to pass a multifaceted no, Trump didn't immigration. Need that. Trump didn't need that. No, no. Didn't no. Need no. That. When you, what, what, when so we talk well about confident. when we talk about the Repu what, what the Republicans are doing, and I agree with Harris that it is an election year. In immigration, if I was a Republican, that would be what I was talking about day, day Can and night. Can I ask you a simple but, question? Yeah. Is this an emergency? What's happening at the border? Yes, but this okay. this, so in an this emergency, what do you do? You send this, FEMA and everything you have, but this and you do not what you can from the well, executive office. I want to weigh in on that. Title 42, according to Robert Redfield, talked to me directly about this, was not just intended for COVID. He had it in mind because of flu. And there's all kinds of public health Jesus. problems leaking across the border right now. Title 42 remain in Mexico, as you say, building the wall. But here's the, here's the bigger issue. Did you look at this bill? This bill is yes. a road to asylum. Actually, it's appointing more asylum officers to the border. Granted, the goal is to preserve humanitarianism, but in the end, it's just putting a lot more resources, a lot more money on a road to asylum. With Remain in Mexico, you have to prove you're supposed to be here. All we need to do, Doctor, all we need to do is have asylum not here in the United States. I didn't Congress can pass legislation. I, you don't need legislation. Did Trump pass legislation? Did Trump sign into law legislation? No, he didn't need it. He right, executive right, action. Right. Right. Why and didn't you do the same? The point is, you really trust the, the people. Uh, granted, the courts are overwhelmed with this issue. But and this legislation but would appoint more judges. This but, legislation but, would appoint more border border patrol agents. But the part, border right. patrol people cannot, be, not cannot be there to decide who deserves asylum and who should remain in another country. That's not their role, and they're not trained for that. And the bill allows for that. I think the legislation operates at a 30,000-foot, you know, stratosphere, layer, well, underneath that, all of the protections that were wiped away, the 94 executive actions, the laws that aren't being enforced, the trauma that's occurring, the, the hemorrhaging that's occurring, that no amount of legislation will um, address until everything in between is addressed in that acute formation. All right, coming up, a migrant coming up, a migrant who crossed the border illegally has just been charged with a hate crime after stealing a pro-Israel flag and beating its owner. The Senate were willing to get on the bill today. We could have an open amendment process, address concerns about the legislation, and then pass it and go to a conference. But it seems unfortunate that many of my colleagues have chosen not to even debate the legislation, but as you noted, within 24 hours of the bill's release, have changed their mind and said that they don't actually want to secure the border. Now that benefits people on both sides of the aisle. Both Democrats and Republicans are probably pretty happy that we're not going to do anything about border security. But as Arizona Senator, I can tell you, this is devastating to my state. I saw the numbers that you portrayed right before this interview, where you highlighted that over a million immigrants have approached our border since October the 1st. You know how many of those are coming through Arizona's desert. And my state, my mayors, my sheriffs, my county supervisors are sick of it. And that's why we've all supported legislation that would close the border and end catch and release. One question was, and maybe you've answered this somewhere else, so please forgive me, but the, uh, some people have asked, so why in the draft bill that you guys came up with, did you not try to codify into law a remain in Mexico policy? Yeah, so unfortunately you can't actually codify that without Mexico's consent. Okay. But what our bill does do is close the border during times of high traffic. I do want to note, every single day this year, the border would have been closed had my bill become law. Every single day this year. Because the number of people coming is so high, we end catch and release, of course, by expanding detention and then removing people from the country quickly. And we pay in our bill for either sending them back to Mexico or putting them on planes and sending them back home to their own countries. Now, remain in Mexico works, but only for the people that Mexico will take back. If they refuse to take back folks from certain countries, 
we have to repatriate them to their home countries or to another third country that will take them. And Senator Lankford and I worked closely to ensure that we were creating safe third country policies to prevent people from coming here when they could resettle in another country and to quickly repatriate them when they don't qualify for asylum. Let me just jump in here. I mean, retract the word conference and put in the word meeting. Just like getting together and talking about it might break the log yeah. jam here. Now, you said on CBS this past weekend, uh, the reason we're doing this is we're, we're, excuse me, we require the Biden administration and any yes. future administration to actually implement this. What yes, we're I'm seeing right. for the American people is that, that they see laws on the books and they see this administration not enforcing the laws. So look, what, what, why, why, that why, why would they believe that now? Go ahead. Well, you know, we agree on this issue. The Biden administration has not done a good job of implementing laws on the books. But we do know that we have to actually change laws to make some of this more possible, right? Former President Trump tried to keep, um, like before Title 42 was in effect, before COVID, he tried to shut down the border and he was stopped by the courts. And as we know, the courts ended Title 42. I've been trying to reinstate it since that time, but we actually have to change the law so we have the authority to do that. We actually have to change the asylum policy standards to make it harder for people to to actually get asylum. Right now, people who are economic migrants just claim asylum and get to come into the country. We need to change that law, and President Trump asked to change that law as well. But what our bill does that is different than we've seen in former laws is we mandate, we require the administration to implement these policies like the border closure. We don't just say you can do it if you want to. We require the administration to do that. But that requires enforcement. Just because yes. it's in the words on a sheet of paper doesn't mean it's going to happen. That, that, that's what we're hearing from ranchers for 2,000 miles along that southwest border. You're exactly right. And that's why our legislation specifically created right to sue for states to sue the federal government if they fail to implement the law. As you know, prior lawsuits trying to force the Biden uh, administration to implement laws have failed because courts have held that there was no jurisdiction to sue. Our bill actually created judicial review and gave a right to sue if the federal government failed to implement the law. Now that has never been done before, and it's unfortunate that that will also go by the wayside today, but they're not going to support even debating the bill. And I'm disappointed. Does it make you not want to go? I mean, I know you're making a decision whether to run. Does something like this make you want to not run for office again? You know, I'm 100% focused on just getting this job done. And so while others had decided that border security is just a talking point for the election, I can promise you this. As someone who was born and raised near the border in Arizona, this is not a talking point for me. This is our daily lives. And I hear from our ranchers. I hear from our police officers. I hear from our farmers every day. This crisis will be here tomorrow and the next day, and the, the regardless next year, of minimum. Congress's yeah. failure to act. Uh, you're, in a battle, right. you're in a battleground state. When do you make a decision on whether or not you run again? Well, I can tell you that decision won't be made today because today I'm going to continue to remind my colleagues of the consequences of their decision. Look, it may not be a consequence for them living in some state in the interior of the country, but in Arizona, this isn't politics, guys. This is our daily life living in some state in the interior of the country, but in Arizona, this isn't politics, guys. This is our daily life, and I am incredibly disappointed that people have chosen politics over the lives of the families, the farmers, the ranchers, and folks living every day in Southern Arizona. And we've been watching that decline and reporting Thank on you. it for three years. Thanks appreciate, for being here. Appreciate you coming on today. Thank you, Senator. Thanks. They're fueling America's crime crisis. We have new video of yet another violent migrant attack, and you will not believe this one. This video doorbell footage shows a migrant stealing a pro-Israel flag from a Jewish family's Long Island home. And one of the members of this family, by the way, lost a relative in the October 7th terrorist attack by Hamas. And there you see this individual taking that pro-Israel flag. That homeowner rushed to get his flag back, but the migrant immediately began punching him in the head. You see it there, put him in a chokehold, 
headbutted him at least once. That's all according to the homeowner and threw him to the ground. That migrant has been arrested and charged with a hate crime. Authorities say he's a Palestinian from North Africa. That's how he self-described. And he got into the U.S. illegally from Mexico back in November. At one point, the attacker repeated anti-Semitic slurs and was caught flipping the bird to a camera. That's becoming somewhat of a trend among these criminals. It was just like the migrant accused of attacking two NYPD officers. What an image. The New York County executive who announced the arrest summed up what many Americans are feeling right now. We have a crisis. These are not the type of people who come to America like my great-grandparents did, like your great-grandparents and grandparents and parents who came to America to kiss the ground. Instead, they spit on our flag, they trample on our values, and they commit crimes. And they do so at taxpayer expense. This insanity has to stop. I just want to pull that side by side because it's so stunning. So this guy comes through the Mexico border in November, commits an alleged hate crime against a man who lost a relative in the October 7th attack. And Leslie, look at what they both do. They're both flipping the bird. This is the New York City cop attacker. And then there you have the migrant in this alleged hate crime. This is a trend in Joe Biden's America. I would say, sadly, um, th this is a trend, but it's not just a trend among illegal immigrants. There are three Palestinian students in Vermont, one who is now paralyzed, the perpetrator, an American citizen. There was a little boy who was stabbed 26 times to death because he was Muslim. These are just two examples. There's horrific attacks against Jewish people. There's horrific attacks against, against yeah, but the Muslim point people. Here, and people not all, and, 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 right, that and, not, and not all, and not all uh, by migrants. Again, something has to be done. Absolutely. I have always agreed with this. And no matter who was president, no matter which party was in power, something has to be done about immigration, not just because it's an election year, because it is a problem, and it does contribute to crime. But oh, but the numbers show that the majority of crimes I, and I violent crimes are argument. committed by Americans. Those are citizens. apples and oranges. And, and of course, we have space in our hearts to warn those who are hurt in every type of crime, particularly what would look to be a hate crime. This is about coming to this country and demanding that the food they're being given for free isn't good enough. This is about coming to this country and crawling through spaces undetected so that they can break more laws when they get here, because otherwise they would go through a port of entry. That's not what you're talking about is whether or not we have space to see that Muslims are hurt too. That's not what this is about. What this is about is when people break our laws, they put their middle fingers up to the cameras. I mean, that, that's what Kaylee's pointing out. And what they have in common is the way they got here. That's what we're talking about right now. And if you want to stop that, that's going to be a different type of, a, of a, a plan than to stop the two examples that you gave. The type here, you close the border. You get caught up in the last three years of 8 million people coming into the country. You get caught up on your, on your justices being able to go through which claims are asylum and, and which people need to be deported right away. Of course, you know how I feel. If you came illegally, we send you back and you figure out how to do it the legal way. And, and like, get to the back of the line. The homeowner. And you figure out how to do it the legal way. And, and like, get to the back of the line. The homeowner who is the victim of this hate crime, I, I want him to be able to speak here. He said this is happening because of open borders. And before letting people in, we need to see their backgrounds. We need to protect our country, our citizens, our taxpayers, straight from the mouth of the victim. But of course, of course it is. Look at that, the, the video of, of your neighbor, of my neighbor, being attacked on his lawn, that is not only an assault, but it's an attack on, on all of America. Isn't that the whole point that we're talking about? That that flagrance, the absolute lack of respect, the lack of respect for our commander-in-chief's words of deterrence, the lack of respect for anyone trying to enforce the laws, those police whose, whose salaries we pay that are in danger every day to show up and arrest this guy, he's facing over four charges. Who do you think is going to pay for his three square meals a day in prison or in we jail? Are. Us, we yeah. are. Exactly. And thank the whole point is that, as he said, too, if I see the flag of the people that killed my people, there will be a problem. That's what the Palestinian guy said on the police report. Oh, there, there's going to be a problem to you? There's a problem now to all of us Americans. It is illegal immigration, and it is the fact that with every breath of this commander-in-chief, Americans are being prioritized last. And that attack is just the tip of the iceberg. When is it going to be you or your neighbor next?
This is no magic trick. This is the real deal. Holy field. Yeah.